NATO responds to Putin's latest nuclear weapon threats. Representatives of the Russian Federation have been constantly threatening with nuclear weapons for the past two years, but it's about psychological intimidation rather than actual intentions, states NATO Deputy Secretary General Mircha Joanna. We have seen such use of nuclear threats by Russian leaders for at least two years since the war in Ukraine began. And this comes from a nuclear superpower like Russia, the statement reads. According to him, this is extremely irresponsible because when possessing such weapons, restraint is also necessary. NATO believes that this is part of their arsenal for psychological pressure and intimidation. Joanna has said that the statements of the Russian president Vladimir Putin are based on the logic of psychological intimidation rather than real intentions. We do not see a direct threat of Russia using such weapons. However, such statements are very dangerous as they undermine trust in the field of nuclear weapons. Russia knows the consequences of such a development, says the NATO deputy secretary general. Joanna also adds that this is largely the same arrogant way of attacking the West and describing the war that Putin started in Ukraine as a war of civilizations or to justify the claim that the West is supposedly trying to destroy Russia, which NATO called complete nonsense. On February the 29th, Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed the Federal Assembly of the Russian Federation. The Kremlin chief, in particular, began to boast about the weapons Russia has including missiles capable of carrying a nuclear payload. He threatened to demonstrate the intercontinental ballistic missile Sarmat, allegedly capable of flying 18,000 kilometers. The State Department, it was said that the US had already warned Russia about the consequences of using nuclear weapons. Threats from Putin are irresponsible. Russia waging new hybrid war against Georgia. President Zurabishvili Despite failure or because of it, Russia has launched a new hybrid war against Georgia using all forms of weapons, stated the president of Georgia, Salome Zorabishvili. According to her, Russia continues to wage a hybrid war against Georgia using all its tools. Speaking about the challenges facing Georgia in 2023, the president of Georgia recalled the war in Ukraine. Russia could not break Ukraine. Indeed, it failed to undermine the unity and solidarity of Europe and even strengthened it. Despite failure or because of it, Russia has started a new hybrid war against Georgia for which it uses all forms of weapons. Zora Bishvili said. She also emphasized that Russia's plan to turn the Ochamchira port into a military base aims to shift the confrontation to the Black Sea into their territorial waters, thereby creating a threat to the strategic perspective of the Black Sea. Zora Bishvili spoke about the declaration of mobilization in the occupied territories as well as the steps taken toward annexation, mentioning the capture of the Ochamchira port, the state residence in Bitsivinti and the Babushera airport in Sukumi. According to her, constant intimidation, persecution, kidnapping and killing of residents continue along the occupation line. The official authorities of Georgia consider Abkhazia and South Ossetia as territories occupied by Russia. Earlier, the head of the occupation administration of Abkhazia, Aslan Bzania, claimed to have reached an agreement with Russia to establish a base on the region's territory where the Black Sea Fleet will be stationed. However, the Parliament of Georgia decided not to consider a resolution condemning the plans of the Russians to build a base for the Black Sea Fleet in occupied Abkhazia. If Ukraine loses, NATO will fight Russia, Pentagon chief. Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin believes that if Ukraine loses the full-scale war with Russia, the latter will be forced to fight the entire North Atlantic alliance. Austin said this at the U.S. House Armed Services Committee hearing. Although the hearing focused primarily on Austin's hospitalization at the beginning of the year, about which he did not notify either the White House or Congress in advance, the congressman also asked several questions about how much U.S. military assistance Ukraine requires. The defense secretary emphasized that the approval of additional funding for Kyiv is important to prevent a situation in the world where one country can redraw its neighbor's boundaries and illegitimately take over its sovereign territory. We know that if Putin is successful here, he will not stop. He will continue to take more aggressive actions in the region, and other leaders around the world, other autocrats around the world will look at this 
and will be encouraged by the fact that this happened and we failed to support a democracy, he added. Later, Austin clarified that if Ukraine loses on the battlefield, the Baltic countries may be threatened. If you are a Baltic state, you are really worried about whether you are next. They know Putin. They know what he is capable of. And frankly, if Ukraine falls, I really believe that NATO will be in a fight with Russia, the official said. Russian MFA spokeswoman Maria Zakharova commented on Austin's statement, Is this a direct threat to Russia or an attempt to come up with an excuse for Zelensky? Both are insane.